Hello everyone, it's System here, and this is Guy Factory 4. Hope you're all, well, having an amazing day. I myself, well, I'm having a real good one. I'm having a real good day. It's uh, it's spring, man. It's spring outside, the birds are chirping, the sun is shining. It's a pretty nice day here up in Canada land, and uh, yeah, in between episodes, I did a little bit of work, so I guess we can look at our floor real quick. I know it's just a floor. You kind of see it up there, too. But I did kind of make our floor a little more fancy here. I wanted to keep it simple, but at the same time, I wanted to do a little more with it. And uh, I'm quite happy with how it turned out here with these little patterns. It's just more concrete. All I really did was add a little more of the red terracotta than the gray concrete. It makes it look kind of inlaid and uh, pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it looks uh, pretty nifty, actually, for something so simple. <laughs> Outside of that, I also went ahead and uh, I guess I organized our machines a little more. So on the back here, I just have power, have the machines kind of all accessible on the back. And then I could access all our factories and stuff on the front. And uh, in time, I'll we'll automate these. Maybe, I, I don't know when. We're going to go ahead and start automating machines soon. Haven't done any auto crafting. But I have the other machines over there for now. And uh, I guess mechanism here. Everything else on the other side. And uh, just, uh, yeah, just a little more organized because it was a wall of mess before. Also, I went ahead and uh, changed our facades on here. I guess uh, that is a big deal. But I also changed the cabling. So the white now. I should show this too. I think I was working on here. I wasn't actually. Let's go to anchors. People weren't sure how to make the facades. I just thought show real quick. You just have to make these cable anchors, which is a little cutting knife and then any igot. And you just do that. That is how you make the facades. Then you can cover up your, your cabling, all that jazz, or the terminals, just like I did. And uh, yeah, they look pretty nifty. So that is how you do that. And I guess we can go downstairs. Let's go downstairs here. And I guess we could see that I did go ahead and work on hogs a little bit. So I went ahead and just kind of put a little stone there. I bred a couple more of the, I guess, the uh, Matter Overdrive ones, because we're going to be working on Matter Overdrive today. And uh, over here, I haven't done anything with these guys yet, but it's producing. I mean, we have like 20 stacks, I think, of uh, like uh, dilithium and tritanium now. And uh, yeah, pretty legit. It's working quite well. I didn't notice this quest either, I guess, advancement later on. Apparently, we have to do every one of them, and we have to get all the truffles. <laughs> so we're going to have to do all of them at some point. So that's going to be a little bit of work. Over here, I threw this here, and this is probably ready it is, too. Let's go ahead and uh, grab. I'm going to have to go get another piece of concrete later. Uh, but anyway, all I have down here is cobblestone generator tier 5. That's the top level. And it's sitting on a following cabinet. And it's just filtered to get the cobblestone that's coming out of it. And uh, now we have a million. Now that we have a million, we can right-click on it. And that's actually one of our advancements. So that one is actually finished out. Uh, it was this one right here. So that one's all done up, all finished. And uh, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Also worked on a couple machines over here. Not really machines. I just kind of getting stuff laid out. Oh, I never hooked this up. <laughs> I need to hook that up. So basically this is just uh, five material stonework factories. Then the cobblestone, the silicon, the glass, the sand, and the gravel. Just so I didn't have to do these ones with the bonsais because we were doing those with bonsais previously. But no real reason to. Um, but yeah, just to have it all automated really easy. And I really should get this wired up here. I don't know why I didn't do this. I did not run that down through either. I'm going to have to do that. Maybe I'll do this right now because <laughs> it's going to drive me. I need to uh, get a piece of flux down here. Do I have flux on me? I need to get it so the system would see it, right? I don't even know if we have enough flux. We'll try. Let's come down here. I guess we're going to go this way. And we'll have to go around the barrel all janky. But that's why I kind of have these little spaces in between the walls. Usually I put little buffer walls. Anyone that's watched my series in the past knows I'm all about the buffer walls. In hiding cabling whenever possible. But um, anyway, we'll get to that. What we're actually going to get today, though, is going to be um, uh, Matter Overdrive. We're going to get into motor, motor? No, Matter Overdrive. Cool mod um, can produce massive amounts of power. So we're going to go ahead and do that setup with a little disclaimer. In this pack, you really don't need massive amounts of power <laughs> at all whatsoever. Um, but there are quite a few mods and advancements attached to them. So we are going to be going through uh, all of them because I want to do probably all the advancements. We'll kind of see how that turns out here. But uh, yeah, where was this? Oh, it was right. Which one's that? That is that. So it would be right here, was it? I think. Let's see. No, it would be right here, I think. No, right here. Right here? Here. <laughs> there we go. Found my flux. Anyway, we're going to go through all the power sources. And then, yeah, we're just going to do them all, right? So especially the ones I haven't touched before. So Nuclear Craft, never touched it. And uh, Matter Overdrive. I've done it in Crater World before because I was really interested about the mod um, because it was like updated from 1.7, had been touched for a long time. Technically, it's still like a fairly unfinished mod, but uh, a lot of stuff still works. 
But anyway, our system should be able to see this stuff finally. So I did work on this. It's all hooked up here. And I still haven't hooked this up yet, but I did move it down here. So the setups here, I tested it, is working. Uh, all I really need to do is add a way to interact with this chest. Let me switch this over to an ender chest. We'll do that later. And because uh, I don't want to have cabling going wonky. I guess I could run to D2. Um, we'll deal with that later. I'll explain it later on. Anyway, let's go up here. What we're going to get into, like I said, is going to be a new power source. It's going to be the fusion reactor from Matter Overdrive. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get some stuff crafted up. And okay, let's go ahead and start crafting the blocks we're going to need here. So what we're going to need is, I believe, one reactor controller. So just one. Then nine of these plus four, I think, for the recipe. So 13 of the reactor coils. Then we'll need four of the stabilizers. Then two of these matter decompressors. Then 12 of those machine hauls. So that is kind of what we're going for. Let's go ahead and grab some titanium. Let's get a few stack of these. And then we'll have to turn those into plates in the enrichment chamber. Let's do that. I love how easy it is to make plates in this bag. Just, uh, bam. <laughs> Just enrich them away. What those get going. We also have this block here. I believe there's an advancement for this one. It is the uh, Floaty McFloaty block, which is probably uh, one of the best names for a block ever. But this thing's gonna make it so we can like place block in the air and then use it as like a building platform. It's gonna make our life a lot easier because we're gonna be doing this in the Lost Cities and it's gonna be floating, right? So it's gonna be a thing. Uh, let's go ahead and grab these plates. So pop them in here, clear that out. And uh, maybe start here because we need, I said 13 of these. I did go ahead and make some isolinaires, but I didn't think I made enough. So let's go ahead and make some more. Let's do another like, uh, no, like 40. That shouldn't be too bad, like right there. Toss that and then grab some of these superconductor magnets. I think we need a stack plus four. I think that's, I might need more, but either way, we'll start there. And then we need 13 of these things. So let's do 13, probably the best bet. So we got 13s of the uh, fusion reactor coils. Then the next thing we probably want to make is the controller. So we're gonna need some of these machine casings. I know we're gonna need a bunch of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make like 11. There you go. Then we're gonna go ahead and see if we can make this holographic sign. That should be easy. And then maybe that, there we go. I already went ahead and pre-crafted like I think eight or nine of those each. So just to have them. But basically this is the main kind of controller uh, for it. When you place it down, it does this like weird shape. It's like a multi-block, right? So it's a multi-block for the actual power structure uh, for this mod in the center is actually gonna be a black hole. That's gonna be how that works there. I don't know how to switch it though. Um, because you can put it this way, so it could be up in the air like this, like a loop. Or it could be like a round circle on the ground. But I'm not sure how you switch it between the two. There might be maybe like shift right click it or something. I have no idea. It seems random, like every time I put it down. <laughs> I never know which way it's going to be. But there may be a trick to doing it. Also, you need to make one of these wrenches to break it. For some reason, regular tools, yeah, they just don't work, man. You have to use a uh, tritanium wrench, so that is something. So if I put it down here, yeah, it's still doing it that way. That is weird. I don't know if I'm going to build it that way. It's not really the plan that I had, but uh, I'm just wondering why it's always putting it down that way. <laughs> there you go. Out of nowhere. Like, I have no re no idea why it does it. But anyway, you can build it this way as well. So that is kind of the other option. Just uh, showing that. There you go. So we're going to go ahead and craft up everything else we need here. Uh, we need some of these machine hauls. I believe we need 12 of these. So let's go grab exactly 12. Then we're going to need uh, two of these matter decomposers. So let's grab, I think I already made them, right? Nope, I didn't. Let's go ahead and make two of them. Then we'll need these matter energy conversion matrixes. Maybe two of those. And do I have everything else? I may. One, two. So that plus that plus that. I think that's the entire reactor right there. Except for we still need stabilizers. Now you don't have to use stabilizers, but do. Trust me, just make them no matter what. It's going to make your... Life a lot easier and not risk uh, losing your entire reactor. Uh, if it gets fed too much material, it'll like eat the whole thing. <laughs> so yeah, if you set these up, it's actually really safe. If you don't set these up, not so much. But anyway, let's take uh, four of these compensators, set those up, and then probably some more of those holographic signs, probably another four. There we go. And then finally the stabilizers, hopefully. What are we missing? We are missing. Didn't I just make those space time thingies? Or did I make another quote of it and didn't notice? Yeah, I didn't. I don't think these stack either. I, you can also wear these on your body. I believe they protect you from the uh, black holes, which is uh, kind of important because the black holes can eat you, right? So being eaten by a black hole will not be a good time. <laughs> there you go. So we get all our stabilizers. That's cool. We're also going to make that floaty block. I know I don't have any feathers uh, in the system. So let's actually just go get those from the market. 
I probably have some in that uh, crate over there, uh, the shipping crate, but we'll just do it here. Do that, grab some feathers, bam, maybe, there we go. Only need uh, a few of these anyway. Cool. And then go and make ourselves a McFloaty. <laughs> I love the name, man. It's pretty epic. There you go. So this is a cool little block. You can just use it to kind of place in the world. Bam, in the air, and then you can kind of build from it. So usually we have angel blocks. Instead, we have this, which is pretty nifty. Also advancement there. We're also going to make a uh, power cube. This is going to be for the power. We're just going to go with like a 50 million buffer, I think, at this time. We go to, I guess, cube, right? These ones. Go ahead and grab them. We're going to grab a steel casing. And then we'll grab a basic. Actually, we need uh, two of these energy, energy tablets for every level. So let's just go ahead and make eight, eight of those right off. There we go. Awesome. I guess I only needed six, right? So two, four, and six. Oh, whoa. oh it didn't grab it because it has energy, right? So I go here and go cube. It's just in here. It's doing stuff. Awesome. I want to turn off that wireless charging too, actually. So we want to be able to see that the reactor is actually working. If this thing's fully charged, we won't be able to tell. Uh, there's one more advancement we're going to grab right away because it's kind of associated with these power cubes. We're going to go ahead and make some of the tier installers. But this time we're going to take them up to ultimate. Actually, we don't need to do that. It's not multi, is it? I could jump straight to it. Yeah, I could just go this way. So I'll have to make these first. I'll need two of them. There we go. Ultimate, please. That one there, right? Oh, I did make the second level. Helps if you make the second level ones. Two of them, then we'll go to these ones here. Two of the ultimate controls, awesome. Then we'll finally make our ultimate tier installer. Then we just grab the energy cube, toss that on the ground, awesome. Then use this puppy on it, and bam. We got the advancement, I'm a computer, <laughs> which is pretty neat. We'll use that for the power, and uh, we'll also need a point. So let's go ahead and grab a flux point. Uh, not a point, well we need a point and a plug, right? Uh, plug, let's go ahead and check that out. We don't have any plugs, man. I have to make a plug. Hopefully we have everything. We do? Awesome. So I think that's effectively everything we need to kind of get this started. Let's grab some cobblestone here. I may go sleep just so when we go into Lost Cities, we'll be able to, you know, <laughs> see. But uh, just making sure we have everything. I think we do, as long as we get some uh, cable there. We're definitely going to need better cable at some point. But uh, not too big a deal, I guess. Where are my ducks, man? Ducks, we get leadstone, we get hardens. We may upgrade these by the end of the episode, but I'm going to go sleep. Then we're going to head to Lost Dimensions and uh, we're going to get this thing set up. There we go. We're back in Lost Cities. Uh, we're looking at our giant sphere here. <laughs> Just one of them. These things are all over the place. I didn't really explore this place when we came here, but uh, these uh, these giant spheres are all, all over the place. They're all linked up and uh, they're actually really cool, but uh, we're not really worried about those right now. What we're worried about, I guess uh, concerned with, I guess, are these things. These things are going to be, I guess, floating all around this area. And there's probably, you probably can't see them, but I can see particles of other ones like there, there, there. They're all over the place. And uh, these things are black holes. They're just, uh, they're called gravitational anomalies. They have a whole bunch of information on them, at least until they get to a certain size that you can't see this information anymore. But uh, yeah, it has a mass number. That's basically the power of the black hole. You got range. That's how far away. If we didn't have an upgrade right now as an Android, this would be slowly sucking us in. And uh, <laughs> how far away it actually sucks items in as well. Also, if you notice this, too, the mass right now is what is it? 7167? If I throw in a piece of cobble, it is uh, 7168. So you can actually feed them and make them stronger. And they'll actually get larger and larger and larger and more powerful and start breaking blocks and pulling in blocks from further away as you feed them more items. Now, I believe there's an advancement to get one up to the point where it's producing 15,000 FE. Um, but this produces way more than that. I, I don't even know why he has that advancement set like that. The interface says 15,000 FE, but this machine, like, there's something broken. They're straight up broken. Uh, with this mod, it produces millions, millions of RF. And uh, we'll see that later in the game. It's actually pretty silly. The horizon number, I have literally no idea what that one means. So if anyone knows what the horizon number means, I have no idea. And the break level, that's just the level of blocks you can break. So, uh, break dirt probably, maybe at that level, maybe not till one. I, I know at two, it could start breaking stone, so on and so forth, but it'll just like, it doesn't even break them. It just kind of sucks them into it. So <laughs> it's pretty cool and it works pretty neat. And like I said, you just feed it here. So I brought some diamonds. You can see there, the numbers start going up quickly and the range went up, the break range went up and the break level went up. So as you feed it, it gets more and more powerful and uh, it gets pretty crazy. 
Um, I don't want one this close to my platform, so let's actually head this way. <laughs> Doesn't even matter the size of me. They have like random mass when they first spawn, I guess, when you first get them, but I'm not too concerned. Uh, we're going to go with this one. This one's actually pretty small. Doesn't matter that much, I guess. Let's go back a little this way, I guess, and grab a floaty McFloaty. I did go ahead and grab eight more of these machine halls too. I said that you only needed um, 12, you need uh, 20. So I did that. But anyway, let's kind of get this puppy down. I put it one up by mistake, but that doesn't matter too much. We'll just do something like this. I know this has to sit like uh, five blocks away. Where are we at here? We need, I said five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need, let's see here. Like that one's not even strong enough to break stone yet. So that's good. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's gonna sit here. We'll try it here. Five. Try that one more time. One, two, three, five. I think the future controller has to sit here. So we grab uh, the actual controller. Let's do that. Aim at that block. Try to keep it right. There we go. No, it needs to go. No, that's right. That is cool. <laughs> okay, so that's the right spot. You can see here, it's actually got the center little, you know, dotted area. That's telling us, uh, you know, basically that's where the anomaly goes, right? So that is cool. So we're gonna go ahead, I guess, and break this block. We don't need it here. And start getting the rest of this in place. So right behind uh, this one here, we're gonna go, go ahead and put one of these here, the stabilizers. And what the stabilizers basically do is as we feed this more material, and we will over time be feeding this material to make it produce more power, it's gonna make it so it can't suck in blocks from as far as away, you know what I mean? And destroy things, because otherwise, this reactor can and will eat itself. So you want to be a little careful, <laughs> definitely. Three, I think it's three then this, right? That was three blocks away. Yeah, three blocks away, then put it down. Do that one there. And then we'll just like feed mine all this uh, cobble later on. That will get all set up here. Do that there. Then do it one more time, I guess. Put it right here. There isn't a lot of information on this mod either. Like this was a 1.7 mod, uh, but it was never completely finished. So. Finding information on this is really hard. Uh, there is a web page for it, and I did look at it, but it doesn't have like any real information on the anomalies at all whatsoever. Uh, that one's actually wrong. Uh, so it's hard to find information exactly how this thing works. And when we start looking at it, you're gonna see parts of it that just make no sense, which makes me lead to believe that the power system of this is actually completely borked, like I said, but we won't worry about that. I did mention to it, um, to Dark Ghost of months ago, but I don't think he really got what I said. So <laughs> maybe we'll see, maybe we'll probably show him after this. I mean, in long, in, in, I guess in the grand scope of things, it doesn't matter a pack like this, if this power system broke. Cause honestly, in this pack, if, even if you're doing prestige mode, a couple of these generators here are uh, maxed out and it can handle your pair box. <laughs> so, I mean, the rest of the power sources are mostly just for fun to pack like this. So anyway, let's grab our two matter decomposers. We're gonna need one right here. One right there. I believe everything else could be hulls. So let's go ahead and try to get them in place. So it'd be, oh, let's do it like this. Let's just go along the outside. We just vein mine everything, right? Just make it so we can get these uh, parts easier in place. So something like that there. Come across here. And oh, another thing is too, like this little building guide is nice, but if you don't know how it's built, <laughs> you're not gonna be able to, like you don't know what blocks go where, right? And I only knew because uh, I looked out the uh, actual wiki for it. So. I guess the web page for it, uh, which is, like I said, not full of information. It literally shows an image of this and doesn't tell you much more. It tells you more about the other stuff, like the androids and stuff like that. But again, it does not give you all the information you need at all whatsoever. There we go. So that is cool. Let's go ahead and get our machine halls in place. So we should have to just kind of get them popped in here. Right there, sweet. And uh, we should get a good structure here in a second that actually is uh you know it's happy with uh like i said before there's two ways to build this too so you can build it around in a circle kind of go up and down or the other way hopefully it did not uh yeah we got enough looks like i had too many uh machine hauls so how many does this take so i had 20 so it actually takes 16 so i was totally wrong about the machine hauls two times anyway that's that, that should be good. If we look at the, I guess this part right here, we should see here, it says power 100 per 100, which I don't even know what it means, but it says it's producing 54 FE. So let's uh, actually go ahead and vein mine these because uh, we don't need them here. There we go. Get that out of here. Probably get all this cobble out of here. It is all unimportant now, and uh, we do not want it in our lives. There we go. 
So this is effectively the reactor setup. This is going to be what it looks like. This is uh, you know, how it works. Um, pretty weird, actually, how it works. It does look awesome, though. I love the look of that little particle effect and, you know, the, the actual anomaly in the center. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But um, to get this kind of working here, the first thing you need to do, actually, is give it power. So what we're going to do is uh, just grab a flux point, pop it right here, set it to a channel. And what's that going to do is start powering these. So uh, the matter decomposers are actually what I believe produce the actual power, or at least feeding them items. So if I give it a diamond, do that, give this one a set of diamond, it's going to start processing this stuff. It takes a couple seconds for it to kick in usually. We can see the area, plus 256 matter, I guess. But it's going to go across, it'll use a diamond, and then we're going to start getting power. And it's actually starting to get it charged now. So it's only using, I guess, producing 54 FE a tick, but it's filling this thing up quick. Now this bar over here fills up over time too. And this has something to do with the matter. So as we get more matter, um, <laughs> I guess the percentage goes up. Like once the, we have some matter, I think this immediately goes 100%. I've never seen it below 100% once this goes across once. And there are speed upgrades we can add, which we may do. They were called like hyper upgrades, I believe. Um, they raise the power usage of this thing, but the numbers in this don't make sense. They don't make sense. Like look at this. Minus 114,278 FE, minus 38 FE. <laughs> Which number is it? I would like to think it's the, uh, the minus 38 FE, but there's two there. But at the same time, we're still getting a net gain. Uh, it's filling the battery in it, right? And then it just makes no sense at all whatsoever. And I can tell you from testing, especially I, I did it myself, and then I did it again on the Patreon server with uh, two of my Patreons. Uh, they had theirs pulling 33 million RF with not much work. <laughs> and that was using the induction matrix to pull the power out to be able to see um, how much power was in it. And they didn't even cap it out. So uh, I believe when I had in creative and it was in an, a pack I was just fooling around in, um, I had mine doing like 90 million RF a tick. And yeah, it's just magical. <laughs> it's basically what I've tried to say. It's a really cool power source though, I do like it. We'll go ahead and finish one of these so we can actually see that like kind of come across there. Show you what's going on. Because, like I said, it doesn't make any sense to me, and there isn't a lot of information there. You can set redstone modes and stuff, but I love I love the menus, man. Like, the menus are awesome. But, anyway, this is basically the power source, though. And, uh, I, like, right now, I'll show you how much power is in this. So, if I was to take this, this uh, ultimate cube, pop it down, it's filled instantly. Um, yeah, and it's supposedly only producing 54 FP a tick. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the advancement for this is for this number here. So we have to get this number up to uh, 15,000 FE a tick, basically, which is not the real power uh, kind of output of it, but is what we need to do anyway. I think it's right there. Create a matter overdrive fusion reactor that produces at least 15,000 FE a tick. Well, this thing just told us that it's producing way more than that because it would not have filled a uh, 51 million reactor just like that, or I should say power cube just like that. But there you go. It has a 25%. It's at 100% efficiency. And that fills up. And I, again, I haven't a clue what that number means. Um, this thing makes little to no sense to me. <laughs> but uh, you can increase this number. The easy way to increase the number in here, the FE, is grab any item. Make sure it's like a vanilla item or an item from the mod that all have matter in it. You see there it has 256 of the actual matter in it. And uh, right now it's at uh, 2682. I threw in some diamonds. There we go. We're up to almost 20,000 mass. Go like that. We've got 35,000 mass. And uh, yeah, it's already up to 621. I have had this like up to 30,000, I guess, in my creative world. And again, it doesn't seem to make much difference. The only the difference it really makes is uh, these things, if you actually break these stabilizers, this thing gets ridiculously powerful and starts this like eating the world. You know what I mean? It gets really big. And they actually grow. They grow bigger than the one block. It's like uh, I, had, I think mine was like the size of like a 9x9 nine nine. <laughs> when I fed it like insane amounts of stuff. It just gets bigger and bigger. You can like uh, break this. So I was showing them in the creative world. I was in creative when I did it, so it was a little safer. But you can like, I could break that stabilizer, this one, and this one. Just have one shooting at it. It's still safe up to a point as long as you haven't made this thing massive yet, right? So each one kind of controls it a little bit more. It keeps it a little more compressed so it can't expand basically. The black hole can't get bigger. But still produces the same amount of power from the mass. And uh, yeah, this is the fusion reactor. Uh, this is how this works. This is it, man. It is strange. It's a little bonkers. Not 100% sure how it makes sense, but it is definitely how it works. 
and uh, it, it is cool, I have to say. The only thing is, like I said, it needs to be worked on. This mod pack, uh, or this mod, hasn't been worked on much since 1.7. It was uh, pretty much an abandoned mod um, at one point, right? And uh, yeah, it, it needs some work because <laughs> this power system's broken. I can't wait to show you with the induction matrix. It just is going to take a lot of crafting to actually get induction matrix uh, big enough to be able to really show the power output of this thing. And uh, it's going to be pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and make it a bunch more powerful though. Where is my platform? Over here. Let's go grab like, I don't know, a ton of diamonds and emeralds. I just want to feed this thing madly. Let's do that. Maybe I'll show you with uh, another one of these two that we don't have with the stabilizer around there. Uh, how it gets a little bigger too. Because it gets out of whack really quickly. How much emerald do we have in here? Emerald, we have 16k. I don't really need them for anything. So we'll just grab tons of the blocks. There we go. Each one of them has like 2,000 matter in them. We'll grab some diamonds as well. Because why not? These materials don't really mean that much to me anymore. <laughs> to be honest, this pack isn't about really anything other than... Um, I mean, in prestige mode, it, it's a little more work. you got to get points. But at the end of the day, it's a kitchen sink pack. It really is. It's a fun kitchen sink pack. I think a lot of people are looking at it like, i got to beat this pack. There is no beating a pack like this. It's about having fun. Anyway, I think that's good there. We have a floaty McFloaty. Yeah, we're good. So let's head back to the actual dimension here. There we go. I love how quickly you can go through these dimensions too. They actually load pretty smoothly. And anyway, let's head here. I'll have to grab a weirding gadget too to keep this thing chunk loaded. I mean, after this point, we'll never have to worry about power again. But basically, we could just go here. <laughs> bam, bam. It's now at 330,000. And it's producing about 3,000 FE. Now, it gets like diminishing returns. Like the bigger it gets, uh, the less power gain you get out of it, I noticed. That one just like doubled it there. Yeah, it's only at 4,000 that time. And uh, we gave it an equal amount of stuff. But anyway, it's up to 770. And there's 900. <laughs> Is that 900,000 right there? At some point, too, I think it's around a million. You can't see this information anymore. So if I... Ooh, it's hurting me. <laughs> hey, wait. Do that. There you go. We can still see the information, but... Anyway. The break range is 10 blocks away now. Oh, no, 20 away. It'll start pulling items in. So if I go way back here... Can it pull it in? Yep. It's pulling it in. That's crazy. And then the break range on this one... The break level is really low on this one. This one was actually pretty good for break level. Because I don't even think it can break stone at that level. Yeah, this one is actually really good. You may want to aim for one with a low break level. Uh, I got lucky, I guess. Uh, they do have random stats, right? But I've had ones where the break level just kind of flies up. And then, like, it'll even start breaking obsidian. And I think this stuff... Like, this stuff, I'm not sure what the break level is on it. But I'm going to guess that there's a point where it's actually going to eat the reactor. Um, this must have an insane break level if we can't even use a regular tool, right? But, uh... Pretty crazy. Let's go look at another one real quick, though. I want to show you how they actually get bigger. So let's go to this one over here. <laughs> there we go. So we have this one down here. This was the first one we looked at. So if I take this one, this one has no stabilizers and start feeding it. There you go. You just notice it just grew. It just got way bigger. And uh, you can just keep doing that up to a point. It gets uh, pretty insane. There you go. Oh, there you go. And there you go. You got yourself a massive uh, black hole. And that'll just keep growing. I don't know what the max size of it is, like I said. But it does get really big. It does get really powerful. And if you have any builds around that, that's eating it. That's just going to destroy everything. Uh, especially if that break level is higher. So yeah, this is uh, the fusion reactor. It is utterly insane. It is crazy. I can't wait to show you how much actual RF this thing produces later on. Because yeah, this effectively ends our power needs for the pack. I could take that gas burning generator... And uh, probably just shut it down at this point. It doesn't even matter. Uh, I have a plug right. Let's do that. One thing I noticed as an issue is uh, the flux plugs and flux points actually have a real low break level. So if this even hits like break one, it would probably break these. I usually have to run cables, but the break level in this one's so low, uh, it's not actually breaking the uh, actual flux plugs. I'm going to set this one to red. We're going to do that now. And then for now on, so we'll have two channels for now on. It just makes it a little cleaner. So all the power will come in on red. And all the power will go out on blue. That is kind of the idea. Go. And just make sure everything's kind of configured right. We need output on that one. There we go. There we go. So once we shut down the reactor, this should handle all our power. And all we really need is a weirding gadget here. So 
Uh, where's my platform? I should mark it on JEI. Although we didn't go real far. Like, look how far away we are and how big that one is now. That is actually crazy. Thankfully, it can't suck up uh, any items in the area. Or uh, we could have issues, you know, going down the line later on. But anyway, let's go here. Let's go to you. Weird. Weird, man. Uh, EI. Weird. There we go. Sweet. Go ahead and set up this. And then we shouldn't have to worry about power, which is uh, amazing. Uh, where am I going? Twilight, man. Twilight is down here. Cool. And uh, there's our reactor. So anyway, this is it, man. This is pretty simple. Uh, it, I mean, if you don't know it, it's, it's not simple. Like I said, this confused me at first, but now that I got it figured out, it's pretty basic. But the power system just makes no sense. And in time, I will feed this until it has 15,000. I just don't know what to feed it because I really, I mean, it doesn't matter too much. This is probably only going to get up to eight or nine. But I mean, we have tons more emeralds that are just like, and diamonds just waiting to be crafted. I just limited it to, I think, uh, I forget how many stacks, like 300 stacks or something. There we go. Yeah, we're already up to 7,000. And I guess I could too, if I wanted to, set up a dropper system to just drop stuff in here. But uh, like I said, I don't know if it ever gets out of whack to the point where it'll actually eat the stabilizers. And if that eats the stabilizers, it's probably gonna eat the entire reactor and everything around it. So I don't want to push it too far. I'm probably just going to push it to the uh, 15,000 FE, which we need for the actual quest. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty awesome, and still a lot of questions. And okay, they're going to wrap this one up here. So as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. When you guys all have a good one, I'll see you guys in that video. Later!